Malaysian manufacturing, especially the meat market, has been an industry for many years, depending on the cheap, low-cost label. Right. That's why we didn't see a lot of need, or they didn't see a lot of need of digitalization. But last few years, um, there was a push from the industry. BFM 89.9, The Business Station. Good morning, I'm Richard Bradbury, and welcome to a special four-part series here on Tech Talk, where we'll be decoding digitalization with Maxis Business. In this second episode of the series, we'll be covering the importance of connectivity in decoding and shaping the future of logistics and manufacturing. In this time of rapid technological advancement, Connectivity plays an even more crucial role in revolutionizing the landscape of logistics and manufacturing. As we navigate the intricate web of global markets and supply chains, the seamless interplay between devices, systems, and data has become indispensable. This connectivity would transform, transform the way goods are produced and transported. The convergence of the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence and 5G connectivity has unleashed a wave of possibilities where machines can communicate seamlessly, data flows effortlessly, and operations are optimized with precision. From predictive maintenance in manufacturing plants to smart warehouses, orchestrating inventory management, the impact of connectivity resonates throughout the entire production and distribution spectrum. Today's discussion on connecting the future of logistics and manufacturing will explore the significance of connectivity and key initiatives decoding the future of smart manufacturing and seamless logistics. Speaking with us are Selva Rajasekharan, Head of Enterprise Products, and Kevin Lee, Head of SMB and Bid Market uh, segment from Maxis Business. Welcome, Selva and Kevin. How are you today? Hi, Richard. We're good. Thank you so much. Very good morning and thank you. Thank you for coming in. Now, gentlemen, uh, let's, I, I guess, start with a, a fairly broad question. What is the state of digital adoption amongst mid-market businesses, and in particular, logistics and manufacturing here in Malaysia? Okay, I can start first. I think mid-market is a very important segment uh, for the Malaysian economy. Uh, for many years of experience dealing with them, I would say that... Um, it has been very encouraging over the last three to four years, uh, thanks to the pandemic. The, it was kind of slow in the beginning, uh, but we started to see the acceleration over the last few years, uh, primarily due to the push from the uh, pandemic, pandemic effect. Mm, mm. Um, if I'm going to give you a view on where they are, I'll say uh, a mix between the mid stage where they are starting to accelerate versus some of them still in the early stage. Why do I say so? Um, see, Malaysian manufacturing, especially the meat market, has been an industry for many years, depending on the cheap, low-cost label. Right. That's why we didn't see a lot of need, or they didn't see a lot of need of digitalization. But last few years, um, there was a push from the industry. And that's where we see the acceleration. Also, the second uh, observation was that we start to see that the second generation of the market, if the father or the mother was ever started and then not pass on the second generation, you start to see higher take up digitalization because this is the guy that, you know, they graduated from overseas. Yeah. They understand the global market. They came home. They, came they, home. Yeah. they wanted to do something bigger. Yeah. While some of the first generation owner are still struggling. Mm. Uh, a little bit in the early stage. Mm. That's why I'll say that. Uh, like you say, they, they came home, they, they kind of educate mom and pop and, uh, yeah. and the grandparents and said, yeah. this, this is why you need to be doing it right. Silva, anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, actually, uh, if you look at the entire landscape, we've got different kinds of businesses that operate in Malaysia, right? Yeah. When we say, you know, uh, SMB, it sort of cuts across small, medium and, uh, you know, uh, micro businesses mm -hmm. in some context. So when we, when we refer to mid-market, we're talking about those businesses that are actually, you know, beginning to start knocking at the larger industries in the country. Yeah. Now, they've been predominantly looking at different aspects of what they are serving and whom they are serving. A couple of things that have changed over time is, uh, you know, of course, the, the global demand that is being fulfilled out of Malaysia, as well as the fact that, you know, e-commerce and adoption of uh, 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 electronic means of ordering and digital means of ordering from consumers have started shaping both of these industries. So the need for, you know, uh, quality and operational efficiency in manufacturing industries 
as well as the ability to fulfill B2C requirements or business to consumer requirements when you're talking about you and me ordering from home and yeah. expecting things to get delivered overnight. We, we want it right there, yeah, right then, correct. don't we? Yeah. So those are new demands that have come in. And it's not something that, you know, traditionally these businesses have set themselves up for. Right. So while, you know, in the last few years, because of the pandemic, as well as the global, uh, you know, digitalization initiatives, there's been rapid adoption. But like Kevin said, there's a long way to go. Mm. There is a lot of lag in the industry in terms of who needs to adopt. The, the ones who are sort of driving the thought leadership have done it or in the process of adopting. But there's a, still a long way to go. Mm. And these are pretty important industries for the, you know, uh, for the Malaysian economy uh, to really move in this direction because mm. more than 23% of uh, you know Malaysian economy is actually you know serviced uh, from the manufacturing sector yeah. and uh, if you look at both manufacturing and logistics both are growing at a, at a very strong and a healthy rate of upwards of 3 to uh, you know uh, uh, 3.5% uh, every year mm. and come 2027 there's going to be even more uh, you know uh, growth that is expected so while adoption has happened in the mid market there is still uh, a lot to go in terms of the journey to be completed uh, for digitalization in this segment. That growth, I assume, as well, is only going to accelerate as well, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, some of the industries, especially logistics, will be growing up to or is forecasted to grow up to 7% year on year. That's a massive That's uh, crazy. growth industry growth. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, moving on then. What do you think are some of the notable challenges that the industry did face, particularly in, in logistics and manufacturer, prior to this whole push towards digitalization? Um, my observation is that uh, when we're dealing with the mid market, especially the Malaysian the manufacturing first, let's talk about manufacturing. Mm. I think Malaysian uh, economy for many years were winning uh, with the low labor cost. So when we talked to a lot of uh, manufacturing, they didn't see a need for digitalization. Um, but now you can see that the cost is increasing, and especially in Malaysia, I think a lot of manufacturing we are in the part we sort of in the value chain. It means we import certain raw material from overseas, then yeah. the cost has gone up, yeah. and uh, the cost of labor has gone up, and everyone's struggling with that. So, um, mid market or manufacturing, they are not like large corporations. When a large corporation, they probably have a whole well set up of IT resources, or they have IT department per se. But most of the customers we talk about in the main market, uh, they don't really have a lot of know-how. Everyone knows that they need to digitalize, they need to be competitive, they need to do something to curb with the increase of cost, to be efficiency, but where to start, how to start, uh, will remain to be a challenge mm -hmm. to a lot of this uh, business. Um, versus logistic is very different. Bill logistic is a growing business. It's not really that it's not really competing to the overseas. Yeah. You know, Malaysia is a market where it has growing needs. So I think logistic industry, somehow they are being pushed by the consumer expectation that everyone expects to know where is my good, here and there, and where and where it's going tomorrow, when it's going to reach me. So mm. I think logistic industry is being pushed to digitalize as fast as possible mm. to cater for their consumer expectations. Mm. Yeah, and if you if you really take the points that Kevin mentioned, right, I mean, the challenges have been quite uh, different. Um, uh, having real-time data is pretty crucial, right? I mean, it's, it's not something that has traditionally been available. So that's definitely a challenge in the logistics industry. And more and more customer information is now coming into the logistics industry. So that actually brings in a new context of cybersecurity and risk of customer data, because now everybody is using, uh, you know, real-time means, and we need to put in our personal information, uh, be it your all credit card. Time. Yeah, all the time, right? Yeah. And you, as a customer, you and I are thinking, is it safe? Is it yeah. right to be put in? Now, that's the cons cons consumer constraint or, you know, uh, concern that's going to be there. Likewise, the industry and the manufacturing and the, you know, logistics verticals are equally looking at how they need to be sensitive about it because cybersecurity threats are not something that's happening in another parts of, part of the world. It's very real. There's an attack that happens in another part of the world. It doesn't take, you know, a few days or uh, yeah. months to get here. If yeah. it, it can be pretty much near real time. So, cyber cyber security is one of those elements that definitely is a you know a concern that is there and talk about uh, 
manufacturing industry uh, for them you know the the ability to actually look at real time data processing managing their supply chain how do they get to you know uh, having a good clear view of their uh, demand versus supply all of those are the challenges uh, that they can really overcome with digitalization and mm. these are things that used to be a problem and unknown uh, you know uh, uh, challenges to overcome but today there are enough operational technology and information technology capabilities that actually allow them to leapfrog the generations of digitalization that mm. they could have been behind mm. yeah. i mean it, it was a while ago when you'd have these companies who they knew they had to digitalize and they you knew they knew they they should digitalize but just didn't want to because yeah. of uh, Absolutely. fear yeah. was a big yeah. issue right and yeah. cybersecurity seems to be one of those big fears true and you know um it's not just only the want to many of them will want to but then there are quite a few other challenges that they'll need to overcome right mm. uh if you are an established business you will need to actually look at how am i going to finance it how am right. i going to fund it do i need to scale up do i need is to actually do expensive? it yeah. is it going to be a rip and replace or you know do i gradually do it yeah. i mean it's no standard formula that everybody can actually t- re- replicate yeah. but they need to go through a journey mm-hmm. there's also another thing that we ob- we observe that besides the challenges of the financial yeah. that you need know, to fund the whole digitalization transformation and also the know-how is also the internal readiness because as i say uh, we have seen a lot of uh, manufacturing they know what they want they need a new warehouse management erp but the challenge is once they adopt those solutions mm. who to operate the sustainability so right, right, the right. internal sustainability about developing their resources training retraining was also one area that we see uh there's a gap in the in the manufacturing industry mm, mm. that's where we start to see the law needs in many services where they are looking for some companies out there not just providing a solution but to help them to handhold them throughout this journey so right. i think that was the one of the key challenge at Uh, I observe. So we've been speaking very nicely about challenges, you know, particularly in the logistics industry. But how is Max's business then leveraging tech to support and to cater to the evolving needs and challenges of some of these uh, players within the logistics industry? So um you know uh, Maxis has definitely been a household uh, name or known in the industry for a while for connectivity and mobility solutions and so on right but uh, we have we we realized uh, you know there was an opportunity with a confluence of technological changes that were happening whether it is cloud iot and so on because these are all things that you build on the on the on the top of connectivity connectivity is essentially something that is fundamental right i mean any form of communication requires a, a, a transaction requires some kind of robust secure mm. reliable connectivity and that's something that was always there in terms of our dna and when we saw, saw that these demands were coming up we actually made a conscious effort to actually you know build capability in that front how do we actually get the skills capability technological know how to to adopt from various parts of uh, either global experiences or industry experiences and we've been investing in those capabilities to get ready for serving this and it's not just only from a external drive maxis itself has gone through some of these right i mean in a way you could you could argue that you know maxis also is a manufacturer factoring company and a logistics company of sort so we've gone through the challenge of how do we digitalize and we've gone through you know uh, the capabilities of adoption of cloud the risk of cyber security that we need to consciously overcome and then there are compliance to regulatory and other demands that are there in terms of industry that we need to so mm. we've actually brought the best of those capabilities to make it relevant for our customers in malaysia mm. yeah like what selva say you know uh, how are we relevant first i think Maxis has gone through the whole digitalization yeah. journey. It was probably the one of the first large com- company in Malaysia who did that. And in short, I think to move into digitalization, the end is you have uh, you're moving everything to digital to cloud. You need to ensure that all your connectivity access to your cloud application is instant from any time anywhere. Yeah, yeah. So, um I think we have harness a lot of what we learn internally uh, i will give you a couple example of what we have done to help some of the business um one of the manufacturing they are very large uh, local publishing manufacturing company they build they print and build they print material for school for educations so they have started their journey on digitalization of course they are core strength is to build educational materials mm. and and productions so when they wanted to digitalize um 
the few things comes into the, their, their mind that how do they ensure that they have a secure and reliable network when you start to move all your operation processes into the yeah, cloud, yeah. you need to make sure that it's accessible. It's no longer a server sitting <laughs> in the office where if it's down, not working, you have a technician, you go and do a few you tweaks. switch it off and on again. On. Yes. Yeah. So cloud is something that they probably don't even understand how to do it. So yeah. where our role comes in, is we, we help to provide a reliable and secure network. And then the second thing that we did was uh, we helped them to migrate all the application to the cloud. So this company quite well established has four different office locations throughout nationwide so we did a smooth migration for uh, to help them to move the application to the cloud and uh, that is how it delivered efficiencies no now whole company wherever their employee sits in they can access to the application mm -hmm. in the cloud mm -hmm. seamlessly while Maxis is taking care of their network to make sure that it's reliable and safe. And robust. And robust, yeah, and, yes. And these don't naturally come, right? Because for a traditional, you know, book or academia publishing company, for them to start thinking, I need to go digital. I need to digitalize my process. I need to now figure out how am I going to digitize the content? How am I going to distribute and so on? Mm. It's a huge lift and shift, right? Mm. While they are the experts in the field, we are not here to actually tell them how to run their business. They know their field very yeah. well and yeah. what is the opportunity that they are going after. But where we could actually contribute is about how do we actually bring in the right capability. We went through a big process of assess uh, first and then identify what could be the gaps and how do we even implement it and manage it, right? Because what you want uh, or businesses are looking for is sometimes, you know, sim simplicity of it to say, I've got a partner whom I'm going to depend upon. I'm going to worry about my core capabilities and I need them to take care of what I need them to take care of. Yeah, so. Yeah. That's where, uh, you know, um, we had some of this. And as soon as Kevin said this example, there's another example that came to my mind, right? We've got one of the uh, uh, leading top tier, uh, you know, logistics businesses who came to us with a different kind of a, a challenge for them they were actually very clear that they're going to B2C because they were predominantly doing B2B in terms of logistics. And Malaysia is also, a, you know, in a way, uh, what's it called? Transshipping hub for the region. It's becoming more and more popular. And while that was the case, when they were looking at the rising consumer demand, they were looking to go to B2C. And when they started going through the journey, their challenge was, you know, how do I overcome the possible risk of things like cybersecurity threats, ransomware? I don't have the skill sets to manage it. You know, how do I even identify, hire somebody to run it for, uh, you know, for for my for my business? So we were really, you know, pleased to be able to contribute and help them to actually assess, understand what kind of threats come, and not just put in mechanisms to, you know, manage it on a real time basis, but also give them a little bit of peace of mind to say, mm -hmm. hey, there's somebody who's going to run it 24 by 7, 365 days of the year without them having to build and manage the expertise on their own. It, right, okay. Correct, yeah. How would you say Maxis Business plays a role in addressing the industry's needs in digitalization? That's the kind of top line question. Can you share some kind of cases or examples on how logistics businesses have benefited from digitalization? Yes, definitely. I, I think I can share a couple. I think in short, when we look at the digitalization journey for the for the mid-market, for the SME. It's all about digitalizing all their data, the processes, yeah. to make their operational efficiency a lot more higher. At the same time, it's also digitalization externally. How do they help to reach out to new customers, new market through the, all, through the digital platform? So um, let me give an example on from logistic. Take logistic example. Logistic is a very, very label intensive industry. And if you look at the Malaysia, whether you're upstream or downstream, uh, it is a market that is growing, but it's also a market which is very, very competitive. So I'll give an example. One of the logistic company we work with uh, is a pretty large new logistic entrance into the Malaysian market that uh, they are in the downstream, the courier services. In order to compete, especially the last few years, to grab the, the growing business, you're going to be very efficient, you're going to grow very fast, you're going to expand your branches yeah. without a lot of uh, IT burden of setting up a network and this and that. So um, there's a very clear example of this company where we work with. They started with cloud in mind. They started to migrate all the processes and everything into the cloud. Uh, and we, we helped them to do carry out the cloud migrations. And when that was done, they were able to expand 
their branch network nationwide in an extremely fast speed. So I think this is how example of how digitalization actually helped a logistic company to really capitalize the market, the growing market volume. Aha. Uh-huh. Now, um, what about the manufacturing industry then? You know, what are the challenges faced, and and how is it Max's business is involved in supporting manufacturers' digitalization journey? I mean, we've spoken about logistics, but manufacturing, how different are they? Yeah, I mean, um, see, the the complexities are very different, but there are certain commonalities there, right? You take a manufacturing industry uh, or a manufacturing business, which is probably having, you know, a, a, a centralized location where they're doing all the manufacturing stuff. They've got their machinery and capabilities and yeah. so on. They've got the people who are coming in and automation uh, that possibly can be unlocked. Where where we've actually gone through the journey with some of them is how do we first of all ensure and enable you know robust connectivity in those places because you can actually take automation in the manufacturing to deliver the next wave of capability in terms of manufacturing auto- automation right whether it is autonomous mobile robots or you know even cobots in, in in certain cases use of simple things like surveillance using AI or uh, you know cloud technology is all very much possible but you require to have a, a you know integrated ecosystem to say how does my cloud iot sensors and other things sort of come together and work very well with the connectivity right so those are the opportunities and those are the use cases that we've really been able to either demonstrate and execute in certain cases uh, you know with our customers actually if you get an example one of a uh, clear example in manufacturing when earlier i did say that uh, there are some manufacturing in malaysia they're mm. starting kind of late yeah. so uh, you're not surprised to see some of manufacturing uh, when when you talk about digitalization, it's about first digitalization or your asset or your data. When you have the, all the digital data, then, then this is how you can think about how do you make your processing a lot more efficient. How do you use data to make some decisions you can be a lot more efficient. So uh, one of the clear things we have seen last couple of years is we start to see a lot of the manufacturing they try to digitalize the asset. This mm. is where they're looking at how they use IoT to take all my asset, my warehouse, my vehicles, uh, all my branches. How do I start to now uh, digitalize all our data from a manual data into digital data? I think that's always the first step that yeah. we see uh, manufacturing industry started to build. Mm. Then to beyond when they w- when you start to have all data in the system, in the cloud, then you can start to now look at how do I use those data to make sense of improving certain processes. Use the data to predict certain uh, new demands mm. or certain new trend mm. that mm. I can mm. grow my manufacturing. Yeah. 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 And, you know, um, to sort of build on it, right? And uh, there's, there's many simple components in a, in a manufacturing location that can actually cause a catastrophic uh, impact for them, right? Imagine your entire... Don't mess uh, around. So <laughs> <laughs> catastrophic is a word, right? Yeah. No, I mean, it can actually really bring down their entire for business, sure. right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. look at what happened during the COVID period when there is sudden demand for new uh, or higher throughput. Yeah. You're not going to be able to, you know, get machinery overnight and set it up. So it's very important for machines to be working well, maintenance to be done properly so you are able to predict some of these right and mm. the, the 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 points that kevin mentioned are absolutely something that related to our customers saying how do i know that you know I need to do, let's say, a simple thing like a maintenance on a particular day after so many hours of running and so on, right? It sounds very obvious that you and me can do it. But imagine doing this for hundreds of, uh, you know, machineries and maybe thousands of parts that need to be replaced and so on. It can actually bring the entire manufacturing cycle to a grinding halt. So many businesses, uh, you know, in Malaysia have started uh, uh, taking on the digitization journey of moving from an offline manual process where somebody remembers it or looks at a big fo- thick folder and uh, do it but actually translate it digitize it to know now know that they've got a dashboard that tells them you know when is something due for uh, a maintenance or a predictive <laughs> maintenance something that tells them hey you're running b- above capacity or running to the end of uh, you know uh, life of that particular component and you go and do a proactive or a predictive replacement and so on those yeah. are things that definitely yeah. take, take example changed. Yeah. when all manufacturing are all complaining about you know increase of cost is it all the cost increase 10 percent 20 percent so look at the production line because you is not surprised to go into any factory to see that sometimes certain production line is down for maintenance if they are able to do some predictive mm. sensing mm. that when the, the maintenance of the machine should take place by cutting down 
fifteen percent or twenty percent of the production time mm. indirectly means it increased fifteen twenty twenty percent of productivity. Yeah. And it means it's no longer a, a kind of knee jerk reaction. It yes. becomes something that's and predictive you know. and you yeah. know ahead of time that you need to get things organized. Okay. I, I need to move on though. Are there any other I guess important factors that um, both logistics and manufacturing industry need to kind of look out for to and realize in this digitalization journey, they have things in, like you mentioned, Selva. There, there are some common elements to this, but are there things in particular that cross borders with both of them that they need to look out for? Would you say? See, they are intersecting in many ways, right? If you look at it, a manufacturing definitely has got a logistic or a supply chain value right. yeah. value chain that exists. And likewise, if you're a manufacturing business, you could be the B two B or B two B two C. You've got a distribution line that you need to work with. So, adopting certain common capabilities, tools, cloud functionality is readiness makes them seamless in terms of saying you know hey i'm ready to be plugged into your value chain and you know it sort of becomes easy to handle exchange data real time as well as in a secure manner mm, without mm. compromising so actually digitizing with the use of cloud is a pretty common architecture that comes across both for manufacturing and uh, in a logistic mm-hmm. industry but i would say one of the other component that sort of ties it together uh, and is common between both of them would be cyber security and and how how they can actually protect their assets and uh, data. I've got one final question before I let you go, uh, and, and it's about the the innovations that people are interested in. What Max's business are doing to further propel this efficiency of, of logistics and manufacturing operations. What can they expect? Okay. Um, if I'm going to put Max's business in the, into the position, I'm putting first, you on the spot here. Put me on the spot. Yeah, yeah. Great. <laughs> um, first, I would say we are not the industry expert in manufacturing or logistic, but we as an organization, we understand that every business moving into digitalization, you go through the whole process of uh, setting up a very reliable network connectivity, you connect all your business to digital, get into the cloud, and manage the network to make sure that it's reliable and secure. So the role we play, which we thing we play and we will play very well is where we started. We are connectivity companies. Uh, we are the most integrated telco provider that we have different type of technology from mobile to wire to even satellite network connectivity that we can offer to business to have a reliable and secure network for them to start the digitalization. If they want to go to the cloud, we also work with various cloud providers that we are agnostic, we're brand agnostic, we are able to also provide the platform. So mark business, manufacturing, logistics, they can focus on their application in the industry to run their business while let us come in and help them to take care of the network. Okay, so there are a lot of innovations that are happening in the industry, right? Whether And it's cutting its technologies, uh, whether it is cloud, 5G, edge computing, artificial intelligence, real-time data. So there are many of these things that are there, right? And we are actually working with the industry partners, whether it is local or global, to bring them here to not just only offer it, but we are testing it, adopting it ourselves before we can actually take it to our customers. So you see these things shaping the lives of the industry as I'm sorry, lives of, um, you know, the uh, the businesses, the people in there, as well as the industries. And where it all ties together is, you know, our strategic focus is how to be, how does Maxis, you know, continue to be a leading integrated connectivity provider. And we are actually in the business of, you know, connecting people, you know, uh, uh, places and assets and everything together and generating data and helping people right and in this journey you know we are looking at how do we be the right partner to our customers there are many of them out there i mean if you definitely go and look at it you know there's a lot of uh, you know either boutique or solution or bespoke providers who are out there they could be the biggest and the widest and the largest but Maxis's focus is about how do we be the right partner for our customers and and you know for all businesses in Malaysia. Our pursuit is more to be the partner and the leading integrated uh, connectivity provider in the country. Now I've been speaking with uh, Selva Kumar Rajasekaran, the head of enterprise products, and Kevin, the head of SMB and mid market segment at Maxis Business, on the pivotal role of connectivity and key initiatives, decoding the future of smart manufacturing and seamless logistics. This, of course, is the second episode of a four part series where we're decoding digitalization with Maxis Business. Uh, I just want to go ahead and thank you, Selva, and thank you, Kevin, for joining us here on today's show. Thank you. Richard. Thank you so much. BFM 89.9, The Business Station.